All right, I'm going to give you a real quick rundown on the 2.7 turbo uh, and what it takes to make them run correctly and why your 2.7 turbo might be throwing fuel trim faults or not boosting correctly or it might have a boost leak you can hear or you might have it tuned and it might not be putting out the power you want or it might be detonating. So the 2.7 turbo has a pretty complicated positive crankcase ventilation system and the crankcase ventilation system exists because uh, piston rings they don't seal 100% they have gaps in them there's three rings and a little bit of air can sneak past that pressurizes the bottom end of the engine and it can cause oil leaks and if you've ever driven an, a turbocharged car that didn't come turbo from the factory and somebody put a turbo on it uh, you might have noticed that even with you know less horsepower than the 2.7 comes with stock like even in maybe only a couple hundred horsepower turbo car it's nowhere near as refined it doesn't smoothly come into boost from vacuum and it's not something you would want to put your wife or your grandmother or whatever uh, in with your kids but uh, <clears throat> Volkswagen and Audi they figured out basically how to get a lot of horsepower out of an engine while still making it drive smoothly and behaving like a refined car and a big reason for that is a lot of the different uh, check valves um, and things like you see a black check valve right there uh, you got a breather thing here uh, it, it's got plastic hoses that run between the valve covers you see where it connects there um, one source of uh, leaks it's pretty common for this Y pipe right here to split open and uh, that causes a boost leak and often it'll be under here and you won't be able to see it. Uh, here you'll see the factory plastic uh, diverter valves, which I prefer and I'll talk about in a second. But the main, and, uh, the main thing that causes um, problems on these is these um, systems, they, they get oil vapors in them and they start to build up this crusty stuff like you'll see in a, in a frying pan. Um, when things burn now this one looks pretty clean so unfortunately i don't really have anything to show you but if you open the oil cap and run your finger in there you'll get like this black stuff under your finger fingernail again it looks like you burnt the hell out of something in a frying pan um and so uh i'm going to show you on this other s4 that i already have taken apart uh what the common problems are and how to spot them and how to fix them so that you don't have any more issues because the most important thing on a, a car with a mass airflow sensor is that you don't have any air leaks um, and this system even though the crankcase isn't part of the intake here it needs to be sealed because it can allow air to be siphoned through uh, the crankcase or through other leaks um, and in the engine control module there is no setting for boost there's only a load request table and so everything all the fueling all the boost it's all calculated off of the mass airflow sensor so it needs to be reading right or you won't hit the boost you need to hit uh you won't hit their fuel ratios you need to hit you'll read your mass airflow sensor will read low so it'll actually read less air than you're really getting into the intake and that means under fueling and possible detonation so before I go over to the S4, uh, it seems to have had this part deleted. Now this is this is called a suction jet pump. So I'm, I'm gonna show you this. This is a 4.2 V8 on a newer S4. But um, even though it was really made for forced induction cars, uh, you'll find this suction jet pump on most Volkswagen and Audi motors. And in fact, um, the same part is on a lot of BMWs. And what it does is when you get boost flowing um, <clears throat> through here, this way towards that end it uses the venturi effect uh, because the air is flowing through here it sucks air from here and this is the uh, hose that goes to the brake booster so because they work on vacuum you know normal motors that aren't forced induction uh, they all they create vacuum um, to pull vacuum on the uh, brake booster but the Volkswagen and Audi engineers realize that if you're like really just beating on it, like in the mountains or something, and you're wide open throttle a lot, uh, and you're heavily basically going from braking to wide open throttle, there's no uh, intake vacuum at wide open throttle. Your vacuum drops um, because there's no restriction. The throttle body's not closed. So they realized we need a way to create vacuum for the brake booster uh, with boost. And so, as I said, air flows through this way. And because air is flowing quickly straight through, it pulls on that. This part um, 
will clog up. You'll take it off and you'll be, you'll try to blow through here and this will be constricted uh, or restricted and you won't be able to blow through it. And that's that's a it's a big issue. You need to replace it, but it's not necessarily what's throwing your fuel trims off. So I'll take you over this 2.7 now and show you some more. All right, so this car I've already got the intake off and everything because we're replacing the gasket and cleaning out the sludge out of this uh, breather that's down in the center of the intake uh, valley. So you'll see here we've got a little four-way check valve that was broken and somebody just figured, oh, well, all that really needs to be done is it needs to be uh, sealed uh, so I can put this hose back on. But that's not really the case because, like I said, these will get restricted. This is a check valve. These things allow vacuum to get to solenoids for the um, emission systems and things like that. They also are supposed to stop vacuum from going one way and stop boost from being able to go the other way and pressurizing things. And so, um, unfortunately, a lot of these check valves are, are kind of expensive. Like, this is probably like a $40 check valve. This green one's $30, $40. Bucks. I mean, you can take them out and you can try and make sure you can blow through it one way and suck through it the other way. Uh, but really, that doesn't mean that it's allowing the correct amount of flow in each direction. In reality, this is the kind of stuff you need to replace. So any of these hoses that you see are cracked or broken, uh, these check valves, that check valve, there's um, some gray and black check valves very often. <clears throat> Take the intake off, clean all the sludge out of here so it doesn't fall into the bottom end. Um, but you'll see this is the breather system right here that I was showing you that runs between the valve covers and as I said its job is to allow the crankcase pressure to escape and be drawn back into the intake to be um, to be burned not only because you don't want those oil vapors getting in the atmosphere for emissions reasons uh, but also it's metered air so whatever goes into the intake into the cylinders escapes past the rings and ends in the bottom end of the crankcase you don't want that to escape back out into the atmosphere because it's already been metered and that means that the mass airflow sensor has already accounted for that air in the air fuel ratios. So if it can escape to the outside world, your mass airflow sensor is basically going to be reading the incorrect amount of air. Um, and as I said, a lot of this stuff is pretty expensive and that's why a lot of people they figure, oh, well, my car was running fine before I tuned it or whatever, so why do I need to do it? And <clears throat> the answer is basically vacuum leaks and boost leaks, they change by RPM. So a vacuum leak is bigger at idle because it's a hole and you have vacuum, but under full throttle, you don't have vacuum anymore. You've got boost. And so if it's something that's blocked from boost by a check valve, that vacuum leak comparably becomes smaller because you you draw a much larger amount of air at high rpm so if you've got say this vacuum leaks leaking this is a high estimate it's ridiculous it's just for um illustrative purposes but say you're leaking a liter of air per minute of uh through vacuum hose you're allowed to it's sucking a liter of air from the outside world that's not being metered into the engine and the engine is burning 10 liters per minute which is again not correct at idle so the engine, uh, then if it's burning 10 liters per minute of air at idle, it's going to burn 1,000 liters per air at high RPM. And again, these numbers are completely wrong. I'm just using even numbers to illustrate it. So at, at 1,000 liters per minute of, of air being metered, that one liter per minute is no longer significant. Um, you can tell when these hoses and stuff are bad because there'll be oil residue all over it. So... If there's oil residue on your lines, um, then they're bad. And they're allowing boost to leak, and they're allowing vacuum to leak. And this is actually what causes the cam adjuster seals back here on the back of the head to leak, uh, and the valve cover gaskets. It's uh, People often think, oh, it's just a gasket leak. But in reality, you're fixing the symptom. You're not fixing the root cause. The root cause is excessive crankcase pressure, and that is... An issue even on stock uh, two sevens that are not tuned for more boost and it's even worse when they're tuned for more boost because it's a higher pressure they have more issues so you need to go in you need to replace all the breather stuff which is this super expensive plastic piece that goes between the valve covers um, uh, this piece here 
any of these vacuum hoses that you see are torn or broken. Um, there's one that runs to a vacuum reservoir over here often. Um, this one I think is in a different spot. Um, and so basically, uh, it helps to pull the intake or it's better to pull the intake basically and replace all this stuff. So any of the green check valves, any black, any gray check valves, any of this stuff, I don't typically do the brake booster hose, but if you if you want to, you can. There's a check valve in there, and if it fails, you'll lose brake uh, brake assist. Um, you know, but very often you'll get down in, and you're you're gonna find a bunch of broken hoses and stuff in here. And there was some that I, more that I was gonna show you, um, but <clears throat> I don't know what happened to the broken one right now. Um, but also, all these uh, lines, all these hoses, they control and allow the vacuum for the solenoids, uh, the leak detection pump for the EVAP system. It's actually powered by vacuum. The secondary air system, um, which this car doesn't have, uh, two sevens don't have um, combi valves. Um, if they have secondary air, it's mostly like the all roads and stuff has it back here. Um, but basically any of the vacuum hoses that you see rips or tears in any of this breather stuff here uh, and if you don't do that um, people think of air flowing into a motor as being like a stream like they think of it as like water going through a garden hose but it's actually not really like that when the intake valves close um, or the throttle body closes you get air bouncing back off the valves and bouncing back off the throttle body and heading back towards the air filter housing and especially if this stuff is bad it creates a lot of um, uh, oil mist or vapor that gets in the intake and that gets on the mass airflow sensor and it kills it so once this stuff is bad for a while it actually kills your mass airflow sensor and then on top of that Nearly every automatic transmission I've ever replaced, when I've got done replacing it, I found that the breather system is bad and the mass airflow sensor is reading incorrectly. And the reason that that does that is because, again, the whole load signal and boost and everything is based off of the mass airflow sensor reading. And so if it goes bad, your transmission doesn't know um, that your engine's under as much of a load as it is. And so it doesn't give enough line pressure to the clutch packs in there and it causes the clutches to slip in the drums in the automatic trans. So this system, which a lot of people don't even really realize is there, is I would, you know, like the main cause of a majority of the uh, engine and transmission problems on German cars. And again, because it's there, that's why you can have a 600 horsepower S4 that you could let your grandmother drive and, you know, it wouldn't get squirrely and go into a tree. So some people like want to get rid of it and put a catch can system on there, um, but I'm not really a fan of it. As you can see here, you can see the sludge buildup and stuff. Um, and so that gets in and it starts clogging all those check valves. So Again, uh, if you find the suction jet pump on your vehicle, which it should have if it hasn't been deleted, you need to do that. You need to do this spider, they call it a spider assembly, a lot of people will call it. And it's these hoses, it's, it's this. Um, here's that broken vacuum line. So any broken vacuum lines. Um, and then there's another green check valve that's on the intake here. Uh, so you want to do that too. And then another thing I wanted to talk about was diverter valves. I generally do the diverter valves when I do this. And this is a aftermarket buy pipe. It's like from APR. Uh, it's like a RS4 clone or something. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, a lot of people think, well, I, I need aftermarket diverter valves because mine aren't going to flow enough or mine are plastic and they're bad. And they put these metal ones on. Um, these are still diverter valves, so they're good because what it does is it allows the boost... Uh, to go back into the intake system so that it doesn't dump metered air. You definitely don't want splitter valves, they call them, which dump some of the air to the atmosphere and some of it to the intake, just basically for noise. You don't want atmospheric blow-off valves that blow everything off to the atmosphere because your car will run super rich every single time you shift because it, you know, the engine said, well, I saw 100 liters of air just go into the motor and it doesn't know you dumped it, and now it added... Uh, the correct amount of fuel. I don't like metal diverter valves. I always run the plastic RS6 ones. And the reason is on my wall of shame at my shop, we had a couple of these that had stuck shut. And then every time you'd shift, the turbo would spin backwards. It sounds like a rattlesnake. If you know, 
I mean, if you know anything about cars, you should hear it. But I had some customers that didn't realize what it was and didn't have the money and didn't bring it in. Um, and I actually had a few turbos in my wall of shame case that had blown up because these had failed. So these, if or when they fail, they stick and then they don't open. Whereas the plastic ones, when they fail, they blow apart. You get a boost leak and you know it. So I always run the, the RS6 ones. So if you replace these things, then you'll get the correct fuel metering and you'll get the right boost and the car will run right. But if you don't, you can see in the mass airflow sensor readings when you read it, it should read about three and a half to four and a half grams per second of air at idle, which is in the measured values in like somewhere in the first through fifth block. And then at 2000 RPM with the car sitting still, it should read 10 and a half or 11 grams per second of air. When this stuff is oily like this, when you do that log, you'll see sometimes it'll only read seven or eight grams per second of air. That's way low. And then when you're under boost, um, under full load, like it reads very, very low. And generally that's what causes the majority of the problems uh, when, when your car isn't running right. It's throwing lean codes or rich codes and that'll kill your cats, that'll kill your oxygen sensors, that'll make all your mission stuff not pass, it'll make you not hit the right boost, it'll make you get poor fuel mileage. And more or less, if your car is not tuned, it probably needs this system every 80 to 100,000 miles. And if it is, it might need it even more frequently. Uh, but I recommend staying with this system because it makes the car drive correctly. You'll still get good mileage. Uh, it's still, um, you know, reads the air properly. Whereas a lot of the catch can setups and setups where people try to put like these aftermarket silicone hoses on and, and get rid of some of these components, they just don't run right. So stick with the factory stuff. It's expensive. It's probably three, $400 worth of parts, especially if you're doing the cam adjuster seals in the same time, but it, it needs to be done.